the mission isn't over. That's the key thing. It's a, it's a year after landing, but the mission still has another year left in it. We still hope to hear from the lander this this week or maybe, well, maybe this week, hopefully in the next month or so. So everything's still going on. The, the, the core ethos of this mission was to study a comet, work out how a comet works, how it works when it goes around the sun, and that's what we're still doing. We went through the closest approach to the sun in August this year. We had approached the closest approach, perihelion, from last year, and now we're following the comet away from the sun to see how this interaction works. The comet is driven by the sun. And we've been discovering fantastic things about the comet that we, we were studying, of gerasimenko the, the measurements we've made show that this object is very, very old, around 4.6 billion years old, as old as the solar system and possibly even older. So the material we're finding inside it is really primordial and indicates the ingredients that went into making the solar system. And that's why we study comets, to see what was there at the beginning and kind of put them into context of what we have now as a solar system and see how things evolve. Why is it the Earth is so special that it's full of water, that kind of thing? There have been a number of results touching on what we call the, the origins of the solar system type pictures and, and pictures uh, and, and results. The oxygen uh, result was one of these. We also had uh, a detection of molecular nitrogen, as well as looking at the different flavours of water that come off of a comet. And all of these put into context where the comet came from, what its evolution has been. And in particular, all of these have ticked the box to say that this is a very, very old object. It's very primordial. It's pretty pristine in terms of a comet. It hasn't been, hasn't been toyed with much. So the stuff that we find on there is really old, possibly predating the formation of the sun. Philae did what it was supposed to do after its bouncing last year. It went, it went to sleep and went into hibernation. Uh, it came back out of hibernation in June this year, but we were challenged with a very active comet we had to fly further away with the rosetta orbiter and that meant it put us out of range of of, uh, of the signal so it's you know it's a bit like your wi-fi signal if you move too far away from your house that's basically what was happening we couldn't contact accurately the lander now we will be coming back we're now hopefully this week going below 200 kilometers in altitude so we're getting back to within the range that we think we'll be able to hear from Philae. and if it's if it's lasted through perihelion we have strong beliefs that it would would do that, it's, it's a pretty hardy spacecraft, then we'll hear from it in the next month or so. Ultimately, if, if and when we do hear from it, it'll only last up until about January, February next year, because at that point, the temperature and, and, and really the amount of solar illumination, the power available to, to, the, to the lander will be too low. So we've got this window of opportunity coming up in the next months to, to add to the, the fantastic science that we've already got.